If you were going to estimate the number of people worldwide that have been killed by HIV, you would probably estimate a pretty large number, something like hundreds of thousands, maybe millions, something like that. In reality, the number is actually zero. And the reason is, HIV weakens the immune system. And it is this weakness in the immune system that then allows something to really do some damage. As you know, white blood cells are involved in defending against pathogens. HIV has a negative effect on a specific type of white blood cell known as helper T cells. When HIV enters the body, it moves over to the white blood cells and it injects its genetic material inside of these helper T cells. It then uses the machinery of these cells to replicate that genetic material and therefore producing more copies of the virus. Of course, after it does this, the consequence is that the white blood cell is no use anymore. Now, what this means is that while under normal circumstances, when a pathogen enters the body, there are plenty of white blood cells there to deal with it and defend against it, when HIV has had its effect on the body, there will be far fewer of these white blood cells. Therefore, when some sort of pathogen enters the body, it has plenty of opportunity to replicate and start doing lots of damage to the body. AIDS, which is Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, is the situation where a person is highly vulnerable to infection. And the reason is that the white blood cell count is very, very low. So this is what occurs as a consequence of the HIV virus. HIV can be transmitted in a number of ways, but it's passed through bodily fluids. So it can be passed on through sexual intercourse, sharing needles with an HIV positive person. It can be passed from mother to baby during birth, and it can also be passed on by breastfeeding. Some people have the idea that HIV can be transmitted through things like kissing or by touching an HIV positive person, but this isn't true. It can't be passed on by these methods. Preventing the transmission of HIV is obviously very important. One way to do that is to use condoms during intercourse as this minimizes the chances of mixing of bodily fluids. It's not 100% effective, but it does significantly reduce the chances. Another important point is to always use sterile needles. Obviously in hospitals, a doctor would never use a needle more than once. But similarly, drug users who use needles to inject drugs should never ever share needles as there is a risk that they could be sharing with somebody who is HIV positive.